hello welcome to my channel um so this video is a little well it's a lot different than what i normally do on this channel however um i said i was going to share my story and so i am so this is the very first ivf video on my youtube channel i have written blogs about it i'll link them below but yeah ivf hmm so some of you might be new and completely have like no idea who I am. You found this video because you're going through IVF. So I'm going to do like a five second informational thing and just let you know who I am. Uh, my name is Nisha Salisbury. I am a registered nurse. I am currently filming this on my 33rd birthday. <laughs> Another year. Um, I have been having fertility issues, I guess, my whole life, but it only came to like, um, we only found out about it two years ago. So we got married and we're both adults and we both have jobs and everything. So we went ahead and started to try to have a baby and it's so awkward. It's like the most awkward video I've ever filmed. So we did, we tried for a year and fertility specialists say, try for a year. If you don't get pregnant, see a specialist. So we did, we went to the Nashville uh, Fertility Clinic in Nashville, Tennessee, obviously. It's at Centennial Hospital. I see Dr. Hill. He's so wonderful. I love him so much. Like, love him. Uh, and there we started to um, get labs drawn, uh, sperm specimens, um, just make sure that it wasn't him, it wasn't, it's me. So then I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So then I started taking um, Nature Throid and close to, I don't know, six months after that, I started eating paleo and then keto and that helps a lot of women get pregnant, but unfortunately when you have thyroid issues, that doesn't really do a lot to help your fertility. It's more, um, it's going to help people with PCOS more than it's going to help people with unexplained fertility, which is what I was diagnosed with and also thyroid issues. So after that, we started with IUI, which is where they stick a catheter into your cervix and inject sperm in there. It's basically just like a turkey baster. Uh, it bypasses one part of the reproductive act, sex, the fun part. You just get taken out of the fun part, but it doesn't really do anything else. I was also on Clomid, which absolutely sucks by the way. I hate Clomid. I hate it. It's the, oh, it's the worst. It is the worst of the worst. <laughs> So did Clomid, did uh, several IUIs and didn't take. We took a year to try again on our own, eating clean, healthy keto, doing supplements. I was taking CoQ10, DHEA, vitamin D3, folate, my nature, thyroid, hormone replacement, uh, all the things that you're supposed to do and still no dice. So a few months ago, we both sat down and made the decision to go forward with IVF, which is hardcore hormones, very trying on your body, rough. Okay, so if you're thinking about doing this, do not take this decision lightly. It is not easy. And when people say that, I really, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, like you guys who are watching this probably watched a lot of YouTube videos about IVF as well. And I always thought that the women were being a little bit dramatic about how hard it was and they were just blah, blah, blah. And I was like, it's just shots and hormones. Like how bad could it be? Um, pretty bad. I do feel like me being in the healthiest state I've probably been in my entire life by eating uh, clean keto 95% of the time has helped me deal with the hormones and the stress and the overwhelming amount of just anxiety that you get from being in this process. I feel like it's helped me so much. I give all that credit to keto. If I had tried to go through IVF a year and a half ago before I was doing keto and clean living, 
I don't think I could have done it. I think uh, I would have given up. I think that I would have cried a lot more and been, we would have fought and I think it would have been a bad, bad decision to have done it then. So I'm really glad that we waited. I'm really glad that we got financially stable before we did it and because that's gonna put stress on you too. If you're not financially stable and you just can't afford IVF and you're gonna pay for it anyways, like you're just adding stress. And I understand time, time is of the essence. However, your health is very important. And if you need to wait a year to start doing this to save the amount of money to take that stress off of you, I highly recommend you do it. It's been a huge blessing that we were able to save up over a year and not feel the impact of the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that this is costing us. There are plenty of places now, if you are able to go and fly there, that are doing it for cheaper. Like CNY Fertility, I think it's like $3,500 for a round of IVF, which is not cheap, but it's whew, so way cheaper than what I'm paying for it. But I, I can't do that. I can't leave my husband and go to New York for fertility treatments. I just, I can't do that. So I'm doing it at Nashville. But that's one of those things that you need to take into um, consideration. If you are going to struggle to pay for IVF, you need to save and take as much stress off of yourself as you possibly can. Because money will make you fight and you don't need to be fighting because you're gonna already be <laughs> a hormonal mess during this time. Okay, so yeah, we decided to do IVF and we started our treatments in November, late October, early November. And so for those of you who don't know, because I know those of you on your, my channel that follow me for keto or fashion or whatever have no clue about any of this, I'm gonna explain it just a little bit in layman's terms. <laughs> so you basically are putting your body into fake fertility mode and so when your body produces eggs, it only produces one every month. So they put you on all these drugs to make you produce as many as possible. And so that's what they did in the first month of treatment. The member produce as much, many follicles and eggs as they possibly could make me do. So lots of injections and um, I was taking lots of supplements, no alcohol, no coffee no decaf coffee, no regular coffee, like straight water, no sugar, no grain, no um, wheat, all clean keto, taking my CoQ10 and my DHEA, and my folate, and a few other supplements. If you read the book, it starts with the egg. I'll link it in the description below. Highly recommend reading that book if you're thinking about doing IVF. You need to start doing that at least three months prior to when you're gonna do egg retrieval, which is the stage that I'm talking about right now. Also, acupuncture did that too. Just pretty much did everything. So, don't at me and tell me, if you would just do that, no, I did it, I promise. I, I promise. Everything you could possibly do, I have done it. Besides IVF, which I'm currently doing right now, <laughs> okay? So, uh, doing all that, and I went in for my egg retrieval. If you wanna read my blog post about that, I'll put it in the description. It was awful. <laughs> It was one of the worst experiences I've ever had in my entire life. Most women who go through egg retrieval say that they have mild cramping. I had severe, severe pain for about 72 hours. It was bad, I thought I was gonna have to go to the ER after I came home. But what they do to retrieve the eggs is they stick a needle about this long into the vaginal canal and then through the vaginal canal to get to the ovary over here. And then they suck out all the eggs they put them in a petri dish and we did ICSI, which is another thing that you can have done, but you don't have to, which is where they put the sperm and the egg together instead of letting the sperm do it on its own. We had a sperm injected into the egg because we wanted to have the best chance of getting a fertilized egg in a five day embryo as we could. So we did everything. We are of the mentality, go big or go home. It's my body. I cannot put myself through this multiple multiple times so I mean why would I skip a step this time if the next time if it failed I'd have to do it again and I would go ahead and do that step probably next time anyways it just didn't make sense for me I totally understand people who don't want to do that but we chose to do ICSI so they took eight eggs is how many I produced which is a little on the low end 
Um, seven of them fertilized after ICSI. I keep doing this. <laughs> okay. Um, seven of them fertilized after ICSI, and then we had to wait. We had to wait five days, and after five days, they called us and told us how many made it. So two eggs made it to the five-day embryo or blastocyst stage. So then we also had genetic testing done. So well, majority of the time, the reason a woman cannot get pregnant is because the quality of her egg is, is bad. It's not good. And the body rejects it because it's not going to be a healthy baby. So we went ahead and did genetic testing to pick the healthiest egg. And so, or pick a healthy egg. If we had two, then we picked the healthiest, blah, 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 blah. So we sent it off. We had to wait two weeks to ha hear back from that. Meanwhile, I'm still going through um, injections to prep me for transfer. So two weeks or a week and a half go by and we get a phone call that we only have one good egg. <laughs> only one good egg. And so my doctor brings me in and um, tells me, since you only have one egg, we literally have all our eggs in one basket. I would like you to do a ERA, which is an endometrial uh, receptivity test. It makes sure that the progesterone levels in my body are at optimum levels to maintain a pregnancy and for the embryo to stick. And so instead of getting to get pregnant that month, I had to go for a biopsy. <laughs> okay, like, Everything that could go wrong has went wrong so far, which I'm hoping means that I'm gonna ha get pregnant. <laughs> uh, I hope, we'll see, you know, just say a prayer for me. Anyways, so everything I read is like, it only hurts for a few seconds and then it's over. No big deal, they give you a Valium. So yeah, they give me a Valium. <laughs> I also insert a little montage here of me in the waiting room that Ken Berry <laughs> took of me while I was high as a kite. Take some Valium. Why did you take Valium? Because I need it, because they're going to tear you, my body apart. And you needed it? I don't think it's doing anything to you. I think it's a myth. It didn't really do anything. Don't you feel normal? Perfectly normal. Sloth. Slothy. You're slothy. Very slothy. What's the funniest thing in this room right now? The sperm. How's the sperm? On the lights. They're not in here. Oh, so you're seeing through walls now. <laughs> you love me? Mm -hmm. How much? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, update. <laughs> I have a effed up cervix. So. Even your cervix is yeah, it took, difficult. It took a lot longer, and they had to call Dr. Hillman to get him to do it because the nurse practitioner couldn't get it in. So. Now ibuprofen. Yes. So the Valium helped, and hopefully the ibuprofen will help too. So tell all the girls who have this in their future. While you're in the moment, tell them how it was, what to expect. Take the Valium. Yes, all of it. Um, and just like find your happy place. So how bad was this versus the IUI? Uh, so it was worse than the IUI, but it wasn't as bad as the retrieval. Okay, so after the Valium took effect, they took me back into the um, room and the nurse practitioner comes in and she tries to thread the catheter through my cervix and she can't get it. She can't get it, she can't get it, she can't get it, she can't get it. So then they get these like criers that like pry your cervix open like this, okay? And she tries to do this. Okay, I have no sedation. I'm awake, I have a Valium, but let me tell you something. That don't help with pain. It doesn't. Okay, so I'm squeezing the crap out of Kimberry's hand. 
poor guy. Like, but that is, they said I did really good. Apparently some people scream. So <laughs> I'm glad I didn't scream. She keeps trying and then she gets a bigger one and tries that one. And then finally they're like, we need to call Dr. Hill, who's my doctor. Dr. Hill's in surgery. And she's like, Okay, I'm gonna lie to cane her up. So she sticks a needle in my cervix and numbs it up with lidocaine, okay? If you've ever had lidocaine, you know lidocaine burns too. So, gosh, okay, so I've been pried open several times with, to no avail, been lidocaned up, which hurt also, and now my doctor's in surgery, so they're gonna have to get a doctor who did my egg retrieval, who, he's a great doctor, I'm not saying he's not, but I had a bad experience with my egg retrieval, so I'm like, oh no, this is terrible. So, then the door opens and Dr. Hill walks in, and I, I swear to you, I'm. I almost cried. I was so happy to see him. I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad it's you. And so he gets in there and puts the catheter in, no problem. The biopsy is taken, hurts for a few seconds. I mean, it was bad, but then it was over and <laughs> load. Okay, so anyways, yeah. So that was over, then I had to wait and see when the biopsy came back, what that said. Meanwhile, I'm still going through injections to prep me for a transfer. So we finally get the call back. My progesterone was a little low when we did the biopsy, so I have to do an extra day of progesterone. So I've started that. I'm currently the day before my embryo transfer, and guess what I have to have done? Since my cervix was such a pain in the vagina, literally, I have to have a stitch put in. So they're gonna put me up in the stirrups again, pop me open, stick a needle in, lidocaine my cervix up again, and put a suture into my cervix so that tomorrow when they put the embryo in, they're able to have a very like easy transfer. Not You don't want the embryo to be in the tube and you jamming it, like that can damage the embryo. So, we're doing that today on my birthday. What a great birthday present. I'm excited. I know you're excited. So yeah, that's where we are currently. And from here on out, I will be doing several videos about IVF, what I'm doing, especially if I get pregnant. But I just wanna catch you guys up to speed. <laughs> that's where we are. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I always check back here and answer comments especially if you're going through IVF. Follow me on Instagram, it's at Nisha Loves It. I'll put it here. I'm on Facebook as well, a lot. I have a Facebook page where I go live and I talk about things. So if you're interested in hanging out with me some more, hit that subscribe button, come on and follow me. And yeah, I'm fixing to head to Nashville and get my cervix stitched up. Yeah, happy birthday to me. So yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for watching. To those of you who are going through IVF, if you've made it to the end of this video, girl, you got this. It's gonna be okay. Let shit go. Breathe, positive thoughts, and just, you know, visualize yourself pregnant. That's what I do every single day. I just see myself with a big old belly and some acne and all the greasy hair and not looking glowy at all because that's probably how it's gonna go with my nose this wide. And I don't care. I'm excited. I don't care how I look pregnant as long as I get pregnant. Okay guys, thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next video. Love you, mean it.